I messed up the counting of, in my previous videos. This is the third chapter. Uh, this is the fourth video because the first one is the introduction, but this is the third chapter. It's called Reformism versus Political Revolution, and it's from Roger Halam's Common Sense for the 21st Century. Only nonviolent rebellion can now stop climate breakdown and social collapse. Reform reformism to revolution. The political culture of Western democracies has changed from a reformist to a revolutionary structure. It is no longer possible to save our society through small, incremental steps, as happens with reform. Mass political disruption is now required. This is a sociological observation rather than an ideological assertion. That is, it is based upon evidence. The evidence can be found in the devastating failures of the reformist political class to, correct, to correctly predict the outcome of a whole series of political contests in recent years. Arguably, this failure started with the Arab Spring and the assumption that the Arab people would never rise up against dictatorship, still less win. Then we had the meteoric rise of new left-wing parties in Greece and Spain, from effectively zero support to 30% to 40% within two years. Then there was the intense embarrassment of the Corbyn win and the ability of the Sanders campaign to mobilize 2 million people for political revolution in the United States. We should also mention the darker side, the total, quote, surprise of Trump. The approach of reformism, and I am not making any ultimate moral judgment here, is that progress is maximized by making small demands and small asks of your supporters. The logic is that this is more credible because it makes some progress rather than none. The argument, then, is that making radical or even revolutionary demands is not credible and therefore leads nowhere and thus is ineffective compared with the reformist approach. This is true in a reformist political context. This is where the common view is that society is mostly stable and that problems that exist can be sorted out by gradualist campaigns that make small demands, issue by issue. The problem is that, sociologically speaking, not all contexts display signs of a reformist political culture. Some have a revolutionary political culture. Such a phenomenon is evidenced by mass dis disillusionment and distrust toward the political class and a high level of social repression. People conform but don't want to. This then explains the air of conventional analysts, such as the recent failures to predict the results of public votes. On the surface, things look like a reformist political context. Nothing revolutionary is happening because of the repression, and so they presume it's business as usual. What happens, then, is that when this repression finds an outlet, there is a non-linear political event, an event that doesn't follow a logical, a logical straight line. Politicians like Corbyn offer radical programs which we, are told not to, which we are told are not credible, but the possibility for change provides the outlet and pathway, and people are drawn to the new opening in vast numbers. Extinction Rebellion was set up in April 2018 to, quote, tell the truth and act as if the truth is real, on the climate and ecological emergency. Again, this was not a credible approach, and the same thing happened, but in the political campaigning and social movement sphere, rather than the party political sphere, the structural analysis is the same. Extinction Rebellion said what a lot of people were thinking and proposed a pathway to action, quote, we are facing extinction due to the ecological crisis and that we should take radical collective action, which means engaging in a rebellion against the government. A conventional view, for example, the one I got from the chief executive of Greenpeace, who I met two years ago, was that such an approach lacked credibility and therefore would fail. This view is encased in the reformist space, which has dominated politics from 1989 until 2007 financial crisis. Times have changed. Tell the truth, then act as if the truth is that that truth is real. The statement, quote, tell the truth and act as if the truth is real, is an extreme violation of the reformist paradigm. For reformism, you only tell the truth to the extent that you think people can cope with it, and you only act on it to the extent that you think you can win in a gradualist way. This is how reformism ends up in a morally and spiritually bad place, lying and holding back actions which are now justified. So what is the revolutionary alternative? 